In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Welcome to day two of our consecration. It is so joyful for me to be here with all of you as we begin this consecration on day two. And I assure you, dear family, that it will bless you beyond your wildest dreams. You will be filled with hope and grace as we walk together for this consecration. Our theme for today is we commit ourselves to Jesus and Mary. This is a review of yesterday. We heard from the Gospel of Matthew, the Beatitudes. We heard from St. Louis Marie de Montfort about life in Mary and communication about the virtues and merits. Now we will hear a few lines of the song, of the song that I wrote for the Holy Spirit to come within us in this consecration to prepare us. In the upper room we gathered, afraid and alone. Gone was the master, a world had come undone. He said he would send us someone from above. Come Holy Spirit, come with your love. Could it all have been a dream? The promise he made, someone he would send us when he rose up from the grave. We have doubts and a faltering strength in our will. We trust you, Lord Jesus. We trust you still. Come, Holy Spirit, promise from above. Come, Holy Spirit, the fire of God's love. And now we will actually pray the prayer. Come, O Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and enkindle in them the fire of your love. Lord, send forth your spirit and you will renew the face of the earth. O God, who instructs the hearts of your faithful with the light of your Holy Spirit, make us responsive to his inspirations so that we may be truly wise and ever rejoice in his consolations. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now our Veni Creator. Come, O Creator, Spirit blessed, and in our hearts take up thy rest. Come with thy grace and heavenly aid to fill the hearts which thou hast made. Great Paraclete, to thee we cry, O highest gift of God most high, O font of life, O fire of love, and sweet anointing from above. Thou in thy sevenfold gifts art known, the finger of God's hand we own, the promise of the Father thou, who dost the tongue with power endow. Kindle our senses from above and make our hearts overflow with love, with patience firm and virtue high, the weakness of our flesh supply. Far from us drive the foe we dread and grant us thy true peace instead. So shall we not with thee for guide Turn from the path of life aside. O oh, may thy grace on us bestow, the Father and the Son to know, and thee through endless times confessed, of both the eternal Spirit blessed. All glory while the ages run, be to the Father and the Son who rose from death, the same to thee, O Holy Ghost, eternally. Amen. And now, family, we hear from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 48, and chapter 6, verses 1 to 15. Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. We are called to be perfect, but this path to perfection takes a lifetime of grace and a trust in Jesus and Mary. We are gradually perfected, dear friends, as we seek to do the will of God and His command to worship Him by living this consecration we will be assured of fulfilling the command of God to become perfect. And now we hear about our giving of gifts, our talents, our treasures, and our time. Matthew tells us, Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them. For then you have no reward from your heavenly Father in heaven. It is in secret that God does his work on our immortal souls, our hidden life, with God will produce wonders of grace, 
but ever so slowly and gently. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets so that they may be praised by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing so that your almsgiving may be done in secret and your father who is in secret will repay you. God our Father is so fond of a generous and unselfish heart. For where your treasure is, there is your heart also. It is a great measure of our spiritual life to see what we give away. For in giving away, we truly receive not so much of the goods of this world, but the graces of God, which are invaluable. Whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites when they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and the street corners so that they may be seen by others. I truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. There is, of course, great grace in public prayer. And we have time for that in the rosary and the litanies and all of the wonderful corporate prayers that we pray in church. Such are, they, are the treasures of the prayers of Holy Mother Church. But some of the most effective and powerful prayers are those that are uttered in the silence of our hearts, in the room, in the secret recesses of our souls, with a profound sense and mission to love the Holy Trinity and Mary, and to see within them our gift of ourselves in holy prayer. It is not so much the words that we say, but the attitude of the heart, actually the Less words you say are the better, because when you pray in the Spirit and you let God do the talking, then the Spirit of the living Jesus will touch you and embolden you and embrace you with the graces that come from a pure heart that is silent, silent before the room of your hearts, silent in your gift to Jesus. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret. Then your Father who sees in secret will reward you. In secret, this most powerful statement of St. Matthew, who actually was converted by Jesus from a life of sin and extortion with his fellow tax collectors. What a choice Jesus made in Matthew. If it would have been me, I probably wouldn't have chosen him because nobody likes tax collectors. Oh, well, we, we, we don't like them if we don't pay our taxes, but if we pay our taxes, we need not fear them. But St. Matthew probably did a lot more than collect taxes, but that's a whole pro another program. We can talk about that. But what happened to Matthew? Jesus took him in his sinfulness and consecrated themselves to him as his first evangelist to go out into the world and to speak and to live the message of Jesus. It is us, dear family, who will go out into the world through this consecration and spread the good news. The good news of Jesus will be fully alive with the power of the Holy Spirit and Mary and the Trinity to go out and to spread the good news of the gospel, to counter the bad news of the world. What we have, dear friends, is priceless. What the world has is not so priceless. But when we allow Jesus and Mary in this consecration to anoint our words with the power of the Holy Spirit, to be the new evangelizers of the world, then great miracles will happen, both in your life and my life as well. And now we hear from Matthew about praying the Our Father. When you are praying, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do, for they think that they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask Him. Pray in this way. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For if you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. For if you do not forgive others, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. I will go into great detail later on in the consecration 
process about this Our Father prayer from Jesus. And I will have a song that I wrote for the Our Father. But for now, we heard the words of Our Father. Pray these words this day several times and let these words root itself in the recesses of your heart and soul. And now from our dear mentor and friend, St. Louis-Marie de Montfort, from his wonderful and powerful work, True Devotion to Mary, number 30 and 31. God the Father wishes to have children by Mary until the consummation of the world. It is precisely this statement which encourages us to live these words from their very heart and pen of St. Louis. What is asked of us is to do this consecration with fervor, with trust, with devotion, with love, with consistency. All of these parameters of the consecration will surely and most definitely let this consecration begin this great movement of grace in your life. And it will change you, dear family, I promise you. Be faithful to this consecration. Be faithful to St. Louis. Be faithful to the scripture passages that we hear from the preparation. And this guidepost, this way of life, will most assuredly help you in your walk with Jesus and Mary. Why is this? Well, Mary needs an army. She needs an army that will be formed by this consecration, that you are being called to be a part of this army, an integral part in generals and workers and people who fly the airplanes and people who fight the good fight of faith, the infantry soldiers, the people who bake and cook and sew the uniforms. Everybody has a place in this consecration. Everybody has a place for work in the body of Christ because all of you, as we hear in Corinthians, are given gifts and talents. Why is this? Because we are going to do battle, dear family, do battle with the forces of evil, to let this consecration be a powerful tool that will transfix the enemies of God in Jesus and that will take his devilish plans for our destruction and turn them into nothing because Jesus and Mary will guide us. She will protect us. And he speaks to her in these words, dwell in Jacob, says St. Louis. That is to say, make your dwelling and residence in my predestined children prefigured by Jacob. We have in, been indeed predestined and we have been purchased with the blood of a spotless and unblemished lamb who was sacrificed for our sins and the sins of the world. St. Louis loves to use the figures of Jacob and Esau in the book of Genesis to show the good and the bad, the good who respond to the call of God and the bad who reject God's call to serve him. And not in the reprobate children of the devil prefigured by Esau. In this section of the book, True Devotion to Mary, St. Louis goes into great detail of God's desire of salvation for us, using the story of Jacob and Esau to prove God's plan for our sanctification. It is a wonderful section of the book, and I invite you to get a copy of the book from Monfort Publications, because in this book, which is the basis of our consecration, will help you to understand fully from the words, the complete words of St. Louis, what it is that you are called to do, what you are being asked by Mary and Jesus to live this consecration. For the words of St. Louis are timeless. They will make saints in the body of Christ until the end of time. I myself have been reading this book for 20 years, day in and day out. I have all the copies of the translations throughout my house. Every day, St. Louis gives me nuggets of gold and wisdom to follow, to continue to live my consecration and to encourage you to begin your consecration and to live it with me and the whole world who have been consecrated to Jesus through Mary. And he continues, God the Son wishes to form himself in a manner of speaking, to become incarnate every day in his members through his dear mother. We cannot hear these words of St. Louis and not be moved to take this consecration and to be motivated to make our consecration our new way of life in Jesus and Mary. To her, God said, take Israel for your inheritance. It is as if God has said, 
God the Father has given me as a heritage of all the nations of the earth, all men, good and evil, predestined and the reprobate. To the good, I shall be a father and advocate. To the bad, a just avenger. But to all, I shall be a judge. These words from God our Father to Jesus his Son is serious business about Jesus's responsibility for our souls, both the good and the bad. Of course, he always wants the good to remain good and the bad to become good. That is why we study his words so carefully and with such, such devotion, because these words will make us good. Now, that's some bad in us, too, that Jesus needs to work out, but it will help to squelch the bad and to bring forth the good. Jesus as Savior and Redeemer, has received everything from his Father in heaven. All belongs to Christ, both the good and the bad. It is like the parable of the net thrown into the sea. Everything is poured out on the deck of the ship. What is good is kept, and what is bad is thrown away. And now he addresses his dear mother. But you, my dear mother, will have for your heritage and possession only the predestinate represented by Israel. Jesus gives us to his mother to shape and form us and to make us like her son, because Mary is the mold of God, as we hear from St. Augustine. As their loving mother, you will give them birth, feed them, and rear them. When one follows Mary, she will never lead them astray or abandon them. It is her love and her formation and this consecration that will assure us of the participation that will lead us to heaven by allowing this consecration to bear fruit, tremendous fruit that will last. As their queen, St. Louis continues, she will lead, govern, and defend them. Mary, our dear mother and our queen, will treat her dear and faithful children as a royal helpmates and soldiers of her son. When Mary leads you, you will never go astray. When you let her govern your lives, she will help you to follow the laws of the church and Jesus. She will defend us, as says St. Louis, Mary will dispatch millions of angels rather than to say one of the evil forces have arrayed to lead astray one of her chosen ones and to be overcome by the devil. What reassuring words when we live this consecration, Mary will protect us like an army arrayed in battle array to protect her dear children from the forces of darkness. Let us now say the Ave Maris Stella. Hail, O star of the ocean, God's own mother blessed, ever sinless virgin, gate of heavenly rest. Taking that sweet Ave, which from Gabriel came, peace conform within us, changing Eva's name. Break the sinner's fetters, make our blindness day. Chase all evils from us, for all blessings pray. Show thyself a mother, may the word divine born for us thine infant, hear our prayers through thine. Virgin all-excelling, mildest of the mild, free from guilt preserve us, meek and undefiled. Keep our life all spotless, make our way secure, till we find in Jesus joy forevermore. Praise to God the Father, honor to the Son, in the Holy Spirit be the glory one. Amen. And now we hear a dear Miss Cindy saying for us the prayers of the Magnificat. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, 
to Abraham and his children forever. Amen. And now our prayer, Jesus living in Mary. O Jesus living in Mary, come and live in your servants, in the spirit of your holiness, in the fullness of your power, in the perfection of your ways, in the truth of your virtues, in the communion of your mysteries. Rule over every adverse power in your spirit. For the glory of God the Father. Amen. And now our questions for reflection. In what ways can I be generous with my time, talent, and treasure for Jesus and Mary and the church? How can I, friends, to pray more effectively and with greater fervor on night prayer for these 12 days, the sub to um. We fly to your patronage, Holy Mother of God. Despise not our petitions in our necessities, but ever deliver us from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. And let us pray. Dear Shalom World Prayer Family, may we continue to pour ourselves into this consecration as we walk with Jesus in Mary to increase us in the graces of transformation and the renewal of our lives. We trust you, dear Jesus and Mary, to do for us what we cannot do for ourselves. We have trust and faith that surrendering to the divine will of God, that great and wonderful things may continue to unfold in our life, and our soul will be filled with wonders and untold joy. And now we hear from the song, Jesus Living in Mary. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. living in Mary Come live in me Here is a body to move among men Reach out again to others Jesus living in Mary Come hands that are able to bear, teach them to share with others. Here is a mind to be filled with your light, let it ignite for others. Here is a voice that was made for your word, let Oh. Wow.